This is the seventh in a series of videos by Sarah Cox and Kate King looking at practical strategies for supporting children with dyslexia. In this clip seven, we are looking at dyslexia and maths. Dyslexic difficulties can result in a difficulty with maths because of the weakness in working memory, difficulty holding information while we manipulate it, perhaps with sequencing or organising what to do in what order, or securing the meaning of the language of maths. Dyslexic difficulty with maths is different to dyscalculia, but it can co-occur. Dyscalculia has different diagnostic criteria and presents as a specific difficulty with the understanding of number. Before we look at an assessment for dyscalculia, we need to seek out whether or not there are gaps in the foundations of maths, because often this is where the problem lies. Is there a real understanding of number? What learning is not secure? Do we need to go back to basics? We need to look at whether place value and the concepts of the four operations are properly understood. For example, can the pupil explain the link between addition and subtraction, and the link between multiplication and division? If multiplication is just a string of numbers, 3, 6, 9, 12, that doesn't help with the understanding of division. In unpicking what is and is not understood, we can discover if there are indications of a specific difficulty in understanding number, and then explore a dyscalculia diagnosis. For example, which here is the biggest number? If you don't have a real understanding of number, the answer is going to be 5, not 8. We often find that a dyslexic profile has weaknesses in working memory and sequencing as well as direction and time, and these can make maths difficult. The dyslexic student typically has a strong ability to interpret visual information, and we can use this to help them with maths. Alongside street teaching strategies to support weaker areas and aid understanding and learning. We use concrete materials for maths in the early years in Key Stage 1, but all too soon they're taken away and maths becomes very abstract. Concrete materials are visual and multi-sensory, which helps to embed meaning into mathematical learning. So I'm now going to take a look at some ideas of different ways we can use concrete materials. Games help counting with one-to-one -one correspondence and learning dot patterns. We can use double to build digit recall and shape recognition, either played slowly to allow processing or for matching. Understanding how 10 is made up is one of the fundamentals that supports maths. A string of beads is a good way to feel and see that 6 and 4 make 10. For some, the split of 5 and 5 on this style of abacus makes numbers easier to see, because for most of us we can see 5 without counting. Number lines can be used in a multitude of ways to model addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, and even for fractions. Personally, I like to use the number line for negative numbers vertically to avoid confusion, especially with decimals. Base 10 is a versatile resource that can be used from basic understanding of number that 10 units equal a 10 and 10 10 makes 100. It can be used to transfer the knowledge of bonds to 10 to bonds to 100. It can be used to build numbers and show why we need zero as a placeholder, what it actually means. Concrete materials help with understanding and if we understand we can recall more easily. Here we have 32 made up of three tens, two units and we want to take away 18. We can lay it out and find the difference. Or we can do a block sum and model why we need to take one ten and break it into units in order to take away. We can physically take away eight units and then one ten, leaving fourteen. We can use base ten to understand different operations, such as percentages, fractions, decimals, and then we can link it to money. Fractions can be tricky for many and Lego is a great resource for understanding in multisensory learning. We can see the fractions, we can compare them. We can make them. 
and we can do sums. Visual materials are very important for dyslexic learners because it uses their strengths to support their learning. MathSpot is just one example of a resource of manipulative visuals that can be used to support a variety of maths topics. Times tables are a common difficulty and learning them as strings of numbers or rhymes does not support understanding and can leave the student having to recall a hundred different facts. If we can ensure through concrete materials that a student understands multiplication to the addition of sets of the same size, then they can build any calculation they need from knowing their ones, twos, fives and tens. This also supports the concept of division and makes the link. Providing times table grids is a reasonable adjustment if that's not the thing that's being tested, but of course the student needs to know how to use it. Colour can help with a student to see reversible patterns and in my opinion, we don't need to learn to 12, we only need to go to 10, because after all, 11 is our 10s plus our 1s, and 12s is our 10s plus our 2s. Colour and visuals can help with understanding, assigning colour to symbols, and creating visuals to help understanding. For example, the seesaw for algebra, collecting like terms on one side of the seesaw and the other. We can use flowcharts for sequencing, but the language of maths must be embedded. And we also can help by making maths real, by doing cooking, laying the table, money, distance, estimating. If we're aware of where knowledge and understanding is breaking down, we can use that to support and scaffold what's needed. When providing support or tutoring, a two-pronged approach often works best. If we just work on the current topic whilst it's helpful, retention can be poor, so this is a bit of a sticking plaster approach. My advice is to find out whether any of the building blocks of maths are wobbly and to make sure that understanding is secure, and this can often involve the use of concrete materials at any age. Pre-teaching the next topic helps too. It reduces anxiety and helps make links between different topics. We can remember better when we can link new information to something we already know. This may be another maths topic or it could be something in daily living. Like any support, it needs to be tailored to the individual, teaching how they learn, not how we teach. Thank you for watching.